Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to start by asking you, the, the Compensation and Management Resources Committee of AIG's Board of Directors reviews and approves or recommends to the Board for approval AIG's compensation policies, including its policies on bonuses. Is that correct? That is correct. And are you a member of the uh, Compensation and Management Resources <coughs> Committee? No, I'm not. Do you have any type of a relationship with that committee? Um, other than presenting material for the business units that I represent, no. Okay, when you say presenting material, what, uh, how, how, could you please elaborate on that? If we have a program that needs to be approved by that committee, uh, either myself or another representative from the Financial Services Division would present it for Financial Services Division. Okay, and just so I have it straight, the Financial Services Division, um, are the, is, is it correct that there are underneath the Financial Services Division, there is the Consumer Finance Group, the American General, American General Finance, Imperial AI Credit Companies, AIG Financial Products, International Lease Finance Corporation, would those be the um, entities under financial services? Those are the major en entities under financial services. Okay. And do you, um, do you know any of the members of the um, Compensation and Management Resources Committee? Um, yes. Okay. And uh, could you share with the committee any of the any of the names of those people? Mr. Chairman, I, I would object. Again, you know, we, we've talked about this repeatedly. Uh, there, there are death threats against this company. And given the overheated environment, it was my understanding that we weren't going to be talking about people's names today. We've been cooperating with the committee. We've been cooperating with the Attorney General and providing information. If, if members of the committee have questions about that, we will talk about how to convey information in a secure way. But I don't think this committee wants to be responsible for uh, in, in, imperiling the safety of, uh, of, of, of residents. So I, I would respectfully ask that uh, those kinds of questions be deferred to another day. This witness is here to talk about his knowledge of the compensation uh, system that resulted in the bonuses. It was my understanding that this was a hearing about the employee retention plan. And, and this witness is here to testify about that. Thank you, uh, Attorney Garber. And um, my understanding of, of the, our agreement, um, the spirit of our agreement, uh, is that uh, we don't ask any uh, questions of uh, any names of individuals who uh, may or may not have received bonuses um, uh, for obvious uh, safety reasons, other circumstances. Um, and this is a uh, question that deals with the um, highest uh, echelon of decision making at the company. Um, I, I presume there wouldn't be a problem with asking if he is familiar with the CEO of the company. A absolutely not. But I will tell you, this is not just about members of the, of the, uh, the people who receive bonuses. I presented the committee this morning with an email uh, that says the revolution is coming. The family members of your executives on, are not safe. Your blood will run through the streets in the coming months. There are death threats related to executives of the company, the CEO of the company. Um, uh, again, I would ask that the committee be very careful in, uh, in heading down this road. This witness is here uh, voluntarily to provide the company with information that he knows about the employee retention plan. And if that's what the committee wants, this witness is here to do it. Um, I can read you more threats if you want. They're not just against people who receive bonuses. Thank you. I, I've read the threats, and I, I, um, I guess I would just ask, 
If you could just state your objection for the record, Attorney Garber, that would be uh, appropriate. It, uh, it's not just an objection. The, the witness will not answer that question. The objection is that that question imperils the safety of people. I have a, I have a threat here against the CEO of the company. What's, uh, what's your Mr. objection is? Mr. Liddy, you ignorant, expletive, expletive. I look forward to hearing of your death along with that of your company. That? The sooner the better. In fact, I'm hoping there is some deranged killer stalking you right Mr. now. Attorney Garber. So uh, my um, objection is that that question would call for an answer that imperils the safety of people a and is contrary to my understanding of the spirit of our agreement. Just moving on to um, sort of the description and nature of AIG financial products. Uh, what is AIG financial products or FP? It's a credit derivatives business. And, and what is uh, do you, what is it, what is a credit derivative? I, I'm really not the best one to answer that question. Okay. I mean, I, I have to admit I scratch my head on that also. Uh, it is a very very complex financial related business. Who would be the best person? To Again, Mr. Chairman, this witness was brought here to testify about his knowledge. He, he's an HR person. He can testify about his knowledge of the employee retention plan. I understand. And, and that's what this hearing, it was my understanding, I understand. was about. Do you know who would be the best person Again, to talk to? Again, Mr. Chairman, I would object. I'm this, just asking him if he knows. I, I object to the question. This, it's my understanding that this is a hearing about compensation and the employee retention plan. That's why we brought this witness. It was my understanding that that's what this committee wanted to talk about. Mr. Liddy testified for hours before Congress about these uh, about these issues. You guys wanted to talk to Mr. HR Mr. Blake, uh, please this describe the history of AIGFP. My knowledge of the history of AIG starts in September of this year when I came up here as part of Financial Services Division. I'm not an expert to speak on the history of FP. Prior to that, I had no involvement with that business unit until September of this year. And could you uh, please describe the relationship of FP to AIG? It has been a business inside of AIG since the early 1990s, to my knowledge. It has been a part of the financial services business unit in AIG. Beyond that, I have no additional knowledge. And could you please describe the management structure of FP both before and after September of 2008? Um, prior to September 2008, um, FP, um, the uh, bonus arrangements inside of FP were dealt with directly with Hank Greenberg. And uh, since September 2000, excuse me, prior to September 5, 2008, directly with uh, let me get it right here for a second. Back up. Prior to 2005, the bonus arrangements were dealt with directly with Hank Greenberg. Since I've been there, uh, the only bonus program uh, that has been in place that we've talked about is the employee retention program. There's also two other bonus programs, the deferred comp and the SIP program supplemental incentive programs. Both of those programs, the, the supplemental incentive program was put in place in uh, 2000 and at the end of 2007 and the deferred comp program is the historical program that was put in place under Mr. Greenberg's watch. Can you just describe what the nature of the business of uh, FP was prior to September 2008? I'm not the person to do that. And are you in a position to tell me who, who, who would be? Again, Mr. Chairman, we've offered this witness and we have extensive discussions with the Chairman. I'm just asking if he knows. Office. I object to the question. This witness is here to talk about his knowledge of the employee Correct. retention plan. 
you have any knowledge? I take that as a no. And, and, uh, and Mr. Chairman, what, what that information is publicly available and, and has been publicly disclosed. Okay. What types of securities or uh, products did they uh, did they trade? I, 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 Mr. Chairman, again, all of that information is and has been available publicly. It's in the 10K. It, it's out there in the public. This witness was brought here by this committee to testify about his knowledge of the employee retention plan. Do you have any knowledge of how much of FP's business involved trading in debt obligations? I, 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 again, Mr. Chairman, it's beyond the scope of what this witness is here to testify, and all of this information is available in the public. You, you brought this witness in from out of state to talk to you about his knowledge of the employee retention plan. Downgrade of its credit rating. The downgrade required it to greatly increase its reserves or collateral with its partners regarding its credit default swaps. That same day, the federal government took a 79.9% interest in AIG and propped it up with the first $75 billion of taxpayer funds. In the fourth quarter of 2008, AIG posted a loss of $61.7 billion, the largest quarterly corporate loss in history. Because of losses from trading and securities related to collateralized debt by the FP division of AIG, AIG has now received $170 billion in taxpayer money to keep it afloat. Do you agree that what I have uh, just summarized is accurate? Again, Mr. Chairman, we're not going to comment on whether that's accurate or not. What you're talking about is information that the accuracy of which is easily verified by information that's in the public record. This witness is here to talk about HR issues. Okay, HR issues. As a human resources uh, executive, you know there are different types of bonuses, including bonuses for individual performance based on meeting or surpassing goals, and also bonuses to share in the success of a company or division. Um, how do those types of bonuses advance corporate and shareholder interests? Um, those bonuses are, are generally performance-based and um, apply to you know different uh, levels, different type bonus programs for different businesses, but they're generally performance-based. Can you tell us? the total amount of bonuses paid by FP under the 2008 retention plan? Uh, $218 million. And when were those amounts paid? Uh, there was a payment made in late December, early January, depending upon the location you were in, and an additional payment that was made in March of 2009 for the year 2008. What payments remain outstanding uh, still to be paid in the future under the 2008 plan? Under the 2008 plan? Correct. Over the under the 2008 year, under the ERP, there are no additional payments to be made. There is an additional payment to be made for the year 2009 under the ERP program. And how, how long will these payments continue? Uh, for the, those two years, 08 and 09, paid in 09 and 2010. Okay. The amounts of the AIG 2008 employee retention plan bonuses are set as a percentage, either 75 percent or 100 percent, depending on the level of the employee, um, of the employee's 2007 bonus. Um, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. The AIG 2008 employee retention plan bonuses are not tied by their terms to individual employee performance goals, are they? No, they are a retention program, which is also a form of a bonus program. It's a guaranteed bonus, it's, right? It's a guaranteed bonus based on time <coughs> payment, time worked. And only a portion of the 2008 employee re retention plan bonuses are tied to the corporate performance of FP. Is that right? 
None, none of them are. The retention payments are all time based. Okay, and, and the, the balance not tied to corporate performance is not tied to anything except um, not quitting or getting fired for good cause, right? If an employee resigns, they lose their rights under the, the retention program. If an employee is terminated for cause, there is no payment made. If we go through a force reduction, lay somebody off, they retain their right under the program to be paid, and obviously, if the employee's working on the date the retention payment is made, they also are paid. Okay. Um, and it, I guess it, it's, it's not linked to the particular employee's individual measurable efforts. Is that correct? I think one th important thing about the employee retention program is that it was all inclusive. Every employee uh, that was working at FP, with a couple of exceptions, that had performance related issues participated in the program. And in that sense, it makes that program a little unique. So from the lowest level person to mid-management, to the executive management all participate in the program. And the participation level is based on 2007 bonus and the top management team received a 25% reduction in the program from their 2007 bonus payment. Everyone else participates at 100%. And can you point to anything in the employee retention plan that requires an employee to meet any identified performance goals or measures in order to obtain the employee retention bonus? The uh, best person really to address that question is Pat Chai. Would you like for him to address that? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Could you please describe the origin of the 2008 retention plan? Um, you know, who, who was involved? I really can't because I've told you before my involvement started in September of 2008. The program was put in place, I think, as you know, in, at the end of the first quarter of 2008. Uh, there were many people involved in, in the program, I, I can tell you that. Many people are involved, and you don't have any uh, specific knowledge, personal knowledge of what the goals were as it was being developed. I, I would. Excuse me. I just said obviously. Is, it, is that correct? Could it, you it, repeat the question? Sure. Yeah, I was just saying that many people were involved, as you said, and that you wouldn't have any knowledge of what the particular goals were as it was being developed? I, I do, um, based on what I've learned since I've been um, in New York since September of 2008, uh, but I was not personally involved at, at that time. It, um, in 2000, at the beginning of 2008, I will make an analogy. Um, the last thing in February, March, and April of 2008 that I thought I would ever be doing is sitting in front of you today answering these questions. I can assure you of that. Um, and at the time that the 2008 employee retention program was put in place, um, the program was designed to retain employees for an ongoing business operation with no knowledge of the financial situation that we find ourselves in today. And it was designed to be a retention program uh, for the group of employees it was, it was in there for. At that time, there was um, very little understanding of what has happened in the financial markets, you know, in later 2008, especially the last part of the year. So it was truly designed to be in a retention program. In, uh, in in past years, were AIG FP 
bonuses based on an employee's line of work uh, within a company or a division of a company? Real, I'm not really the right person because, uh, yeah, you know, I wasn't here prior in those prior years. And is is there a particular entity uh, or company that uh, you could? recommend that I would try to obtain information from? We'd be happy to provide you with some information if you let us do that. Please, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, and in the pa in past years, were AIG FP bonuses based on performance measures? Yes, they were. How so? I, I don't know the details of those programs, but there was based, they were based on performance measurements. The historical AIG bonus program had been around for years and really was authored, uh, as I understand it, by Hank Greenberg. And were bonuses for employees in divisions of AIG other than FP based on the nature of the employee's work? Do you know? Um, I can tell you that in my own world prior to September 2008 being an AIG company. I had bonus programs of every size, shape, form, and color. We had commission programs, performance-based programs, annual programs, quarterly programs, monthly programs, and retention programs. And were bonuses for employees in divisions of AIG other than uh, FP based on performance measures? Not, the not if it was a retention program. It would be a time-based program. If it was on a commission program, obviously, it would have a performance measure associated with it. But not all bonus programs, such as retention programs, which are used extensively, have a performance element. And um, I know you indicated that and through council that you are uh, familiar with the documents that have been provided to this committee to a certain extent, although, albeit there's been a, um, a sh relatively short period of time in which you've been able to get your hands around. I was them. notified at 9.30 on Tuesday evening that I was going to be here. Okay. And can you point to any evidence in the documents in the documents of any consideration in planning and structuring bonuses of the extent to which employees to receive bonuses had contributed to FP's enormous losses that threatened the entire company. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to make clear, it's my understanding that this witness hasn't, has not reviewed all of the documents. There are some documents that he's reviewed. He hasn't reviewed all the documents. That's why I made that prefiguratory comment. Please answer. The question again, please. Can you point to any evidence in the documents, and obviously you've reviewed the documents to a certain extent? Um, Again, Mr. Chairman, it, it's I, I, he has please, not reviewed. I have all, to, I'm just uh, asking I'm, this question. I'm, I'm I understand. To the okay, that objection is. Uh, uh, if you'd like the witness to go someplace and review all the documents at length, and you know, he, again, he's here to testify about his own knowledge. So your knowledge. Of the documents that you reviewed that came to this committee from AIG, of those documents, can you point to any evidence of any consideration in planning and structuring bonuses of the extent to which employees to receive bonuses had contributed to FP's enormous losses that threatened the entire company? The um, losses were wiped out, if you will, wiped out employees' compensation, as I mentioned in my opening remarks. Um, as a result of the losses at FP, individuals lost their savings, their bonuses, if you will, that were in uh, other programs that existed. Those accounts now have negative balance, and that's how those programs are designed. So they have lost that amount of money. Did you ever consider not giving bonuses to people who contributed to destroying the company? 
to my no my knowledge, the architects of the uh, of the situation at FP uh, have not received ERP payments. What other compensation, in addition to their 2008 retention plan bonuses, do the recipients of those bonuses receive from AIGFP? The only other form of compensation that I'm aware of is their base salary. 